last week. Welcome to The Good Life. And we've got an exciting guest for you today. And uh, she's, some of you have been through the very same thing that she's gone through. And, but she is so victorious. And it's a thrill to have her. Robin Bertram. Yes. And uh, she is a delight. She has written No Regrets, Loving deeply, deeply, Living Passionately Because You Want a Great Legacy. Amen. No Regrets, Live Like You're Dying. Now, well, that sounds a little weird, but she'll explain what she means by that. And honey... I've got a book here. Well, tell them about this red letter, Words of Jesus book. Now, this is one that you don't even know about. No, this was a surprise for me, but I sure do like it. The red letter words of Jesus. These are his words, and with a little commentary after each scripture. And this we're going to offer, and we never, in 30-some years, I don't think we've ever offered a book or anything, but you'll be hearing a lot about it because I think it's so powerful, the red-letter words of Jesus. and With a donation of $15 or more, you can get this book. Well, that's true. You can. And go to the website, write to us, Post Office Box 6922 Clearwater, and we will be happy to send it to you. It'll be a blessing to your life. And we've got great music today. Christina Paul, and she is a delightful person and loves God and loves God's children. And she's starting the program by singing... Surrender. Every 
everything I have, everything I've been through. Lord, I offer to you my life, lifting up my praise. All of my plans, all of my dreams that are yet to see. Lord, I offer to you. Thank you so much for that mm. great music. And we've got a guest that I think she goes right along with that song. Yes. Surrender. Yes. And that's really <laughs> great song what life what is all about. Yes, absolutely. Couldn't be better. Give us a little of your background and sure. what you're doing, what you've done. and. Sure, I'd love to. Um, my my um, main ministry is to women. I love to minister to women. So I do speak across the country. I used to have a television show, Freedom Today, uh, that dealt with issues in life that women faced, um, which I hope to bring back um, after a, these books that I'm writing. Um, I also work with a group of women called Christian Women in Media. I love, love, love that organization because it's a, it's a group of women that come together for spiritual and professional enrichment. So we really build one another up. We teach, we train, we encourage. Um, so I work a lot with Christian Women in Media also. All right. But you still love men, don't you? Of course. <laughs> and men need ministry too, don't they? Yes, That's they right. do. Yes, they You're do. You're absolutely yes. right. Yeah. And uh, we got to meet your wonderful husband. Yes. Yes, and we met Ken. He has like been with you yes. through thick and thin. He sure has. He's helped me more than I can say in this one hour. <laughs> <laughs> No, and I'm honored to be with you guys. It's really well, nice to be here with you. It's mm -hmm. our honor to have Thank you. you sir. Yes. Thank you. Our honor. Thank After you. reading this book, it is our honor. Thank you. Uh, I would like for you to really start out about the format of this book. Sure. Because I love the fact, I had my little notes here, about, <laughs> I don't want to forget those three things. The share worthy in there. Every chapter has share worthy. A pillar of abundant living, which is scripture, yes, and then intentional living. So, would you just tell us why you wrote the book the way you did? Because sure. I love it. I would love to. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Uh, my heart and goal for the book was to make the book usable for the reader, and that's the main intention. Um, the the share worthy comments. Everybody, everybody's on social media. Yeah. And um, when we're spending that, <laughs> almost, almost yeah, everybody. <laughs> but you know, it's a great tool for sharing the truth of the gospel. Yes. And so my goal was to put in the book in context where uh, the reader could just pick up the book and they want to um, shoot out a one or two line statement about the goodness of God. Uh, so it's a quote or it's scripture. It's anything uh, that is share worthy yeah. <laughs> that they find share worthy to their audiences. A lot of times people are on social media and they're not exactly sure what to post out. And um, they're always thinking what, what they should post out. Why not use it as a platform for Jesus? Yes. <laughs> so okay. I wanted, that was my heart's intent for the share worthy. And then the abundant um, uh, 
pillars, the pillars of abundant living. Jane, that was such an important time in my life because when, when I went through, um, I faced a health challenge and it was a very serious health challenge. And I was given the potential of only living two years. And so during that process, I sat down to write this book. So during the darkest days of my life, this book was birthed. Wow. But during that period, I really felt inspired to write every scripture that I could find in the Bible that I knew was my scripture to stand on in the midst of that darkness. Mm -hmm. And Jane, had I not, I don't think I could have gotten through it. I really do not think I could have gotten through it. So I, so throughout the book, from beginning to end, I share with the reader those scriptures that I personally, personally found to be inspirational in the dark days that I had to face. And I think um, we as believers, there's nothing more important than learning to stand on scripture. Yeah. Amen. You don't stand on I'm scripture, you don't have that. anything. <laughs> That's right. So, so that was the abundant, the pillars of abundant living. And then at the very end of each chapter, Jane, I put in um, intentional biblical living. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to encourage the reader, not just to read my story, because there's so much more than, my story is such a small part of this book. The book is really, it's a, um, it's a life coach coaching book. It, it really it is, is laid out in such a way that like a, a Bible study group could study it, a Sunday school group could study it. And the intentional living um, really encourages the reader to take the information they've read through that chapter and use it in their own lives. It's yeah. application. Amen. Yes, and I would just like to say, <laughs> I tore this out of your book. I said, sweetheart, you let's tear a page confesses. out for, because when we get to the love chapter, at the back of this book, you have 30 of these, and you're going to rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 on how you did with patience that day. <laughs> now, as a Christian, you can't lie before the Lord. He knows everything. <laughs> so when you know you're going to be rating yourself on, did you honor people today or did you dishonor them? Did you show pride today? You know, it's just so good. Love does not delight in evil. It's just so good. Thank Love you. Love does not envy. I, and I get to hear them <laughs> every day, too. <laughs> yes. Let, let me tell you when I wrote that, because I think it's so important. Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 13, uh, in 12 and 14, chapters 12 and 14, he's teaching the church there how to walk in power. He's teaching them how to walk under the influence and direction of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And right in the midst of that, he stops and he teaches on love. And, you know, we hear that scripture, love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous, it does not boast. The first thing we think about is the marriage vows. But that's not what Paul intended. Paul intended to teach the church how to love. Yes. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. Absolutely. And Jane, I have to laugh because you and I were talking before the show. When I wrote that, I had someone who had, they had promised me they would do something. And then at the last minute, they changed their mind and I lost two days of work time. Well, I mm. got upset. And the more I thought about it, the more upset I got. <laughs> You and were then entertaining I got, the enemy's thoughts. I was entertaining the enemy. <laughs> and then I got angry. And then, Jane, I caught myself like in an instant. And I thought of the love challenge chapter. <laughs> <laughs> and I went straight to the telephone and I called that person. And I said, I want to confess something to you. I said, I have been harboring, um, you know, thoughts that I should not harbor against you. And I asked for your forgiveness. Jane, even while writing the book, the Lord, the, <laughs> the Lord was so gracious and I just felt the peace of God that passes understanding yeah. came into my heart. And I think, how easy is it for us to go through our day 
and forget what Paul taught the church, yeah. how to love people. Yeah. Love God first and then love people. I am interested in how did she react to you? She, it was really funny. She did not say, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's like, oh, okay, very casually, almost dismissive, but I felt free. Yeah. And it really didn't and matter. Right. It did not yeah. matter at all. And I got off that phone and I felt such victory <laughs> because God had really blessed me. And in, in just remembering, Robin, walk out what you say you believe. Right. If you teach it, if you preach it, if you write it, you need to live it. And so that, yeah. that was really, <laughs> that was my lesson for that day. <laughs> and so the Lord will allow some situations for you yeah. to test you. <laughs> yes. yes, he does, Jane, he does. What your father, as he was dying, said, Robin, I have no regrets. Yes. You really took that to heart. Yes. Now, after that, uh, and that's why you wrote the book, you had this diagnosis. Then a friend of yours named Claire, I don't know if that's her real name, maybe. <laughs> We don't know. But anyway, Claire was given a bad report and she passed away within three months. And that really got you thinking about living as if you were dying. Absolutely. Live every day to the fullest. Yes. And so that's really why you wrote this book, isn't it? Absolutely. Jane, I have to tell you, my father, he was such a good man. He, he planted five churches. He sang in a gospel group, the Freedom Heirs. He um, traveled around. We grew up going to revivals. That, <laughs> that was my life. Uh, but he wasn't a perfect man. But when he was on his deathbed, he looked me in the eye and he said, Robin, I have no regrets. And I was 40 something and I thought, how could you possibly say that, Dad? Everybody's got regrets, you know? And so it really, I had to ponder that thought because I know my father and I knew he was very serious. So how can you get to the end of your days and look back at your life and say, I have no regrets? So it took me on a journey. I have to tell you this, that my, my father, when he passed away, he was 84. And I stood at his funeral and one person right after another, the entire night, the entire time of the viewing, Robin, had it not been for your dad's prayers, we wouldn't have made it. Robin, had it not been for, for uh, Reverend Maddie, our family could not have gotten through. One person after another and I, Jane, I felt like I was at a wedding feast. I did not feel like I was, and I loved my father dearly. He was my best friend. And I thought that is a life well lived. He left a wonderful legacy, he didn't did. he? He did. And it, so it really inspired me. And then when I, you know, when I had to go through those dark days and I, I was told that I could potentially have a, a fatal disease and I really felt like I was dying for a year and a half. But during that time, I held on and I really did introspection. And I thought, what my father said on his deathbed, how do you, how do you live that kind of life? And so I put pen to paper and I started to map out in my mind what that actually meant. And it, 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 to me, I look at my father's life and, and I think he was, he was a man that loved people and he went out of his way to help people. Sometimes, I don't know about you all, but I'm a type A personality. <laughs> really? <laughs> you think so? <laughs> and I, I get my checklist and I get so busy during my day that sometimes I even forget to enjoy the day. You know, I forget yeah. to look at the, the, the flowers outside my door yeah. or, or open the window and hear the, the birds singing. And I'm telling you, after this experience, Jane, I put in my heart every single day of my life, I want to say, thank you, God. Thank you yes. for the beauty you've surrounded me yeah. with. Thank you for breath in my body. Yeah. Thank you for my family. I mean, how important is it to remember that God, a God alone, yeah. gave us life? That's right. That is so true. I remember those things, but... I don't do them every day, <laughs> but I should. 
we're challenged. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, I, I was, think you will mm. challenge me <laughs> before you. this program's over. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> before we go to another segment, I just wanted to say we had an Uncle Lawton, and everybody loved Uncle Lawton. So many people wanted to name their children or, you know, after Uncle Lawton, either have Lawton in their middle name or, their, or let it be their first name because he was known for generosity and giving. And he, everybody stood up and just talked about the generosity of Uncle Lawton. What beautiful. a legacy he beautiful. had. He left, yeah. Amen. Absolutely beautiful. Well, we're going to find out more about this trauma you went through. Okay. For several years, yes. right after this music, and Christina Paul is singing, I'm not sure what she's singing. It's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> Trips Empower Minute. Did you know there's a difference in your brain and your mind? There really is. Your brain was created. Your mind is developed. Your brain is in your body. Your mind is in your soul. This is why medical science can't medicate depression. It's not of the brain, it's of the mind. As you think, you are. If you think fear, if you think faith, your body responds accordingly. It's not a chemical imbalance, it's a thinking imbalance. Meditation in the Word is medication for your mind. Oh, that's awesome. Meditation in God's Word is medication for your mind. That's why I love Christian television. They give good news to meditate upon. Take a moment, support this station financially, help others think on higher things. Yeah. 
maravilloso y glorioso, fuerte, poderoso, triunfante, victorioso, santo y justo, eres alfa y omega. Appreciate that good music, and you can tell it's from the heart. Yeah. Well, we've been talking with Robin and talking about cares of this life and things that really trouble us, and she's about to reveal to you what she's gone through, and you'll be amazed. Christina? <laughs> I had, um, you know, Bob, I had gone through a, a very dark time with this struggle, this health struggle. Um, in the midst of it, I did not know what the end result would be. And so I, I really took every healing scripture I could find in the Bible. And for about a year straight, almost without fail every day, I would quote those scriptures. I would read them out loud. I tape recorded them. I, I, I wrote out prayers that I would, Jane, I would march around my neighborhood <laughs> and just say with all gusto in my heart, because you know, the Bible says this, it says, no man is guaranteed tomorrow. That's right. And so I, I really felt like the Lord had inspired me to, to dig deeply and, and stand on what I knew to be true. So for a, about a year and a half, I suffered with this illness, not sure I would forget how to get home. I would be five minutes from home and I couldn't find my way home. I, I was a speaker and so uh, I would have notes at the podium and instead of sliding the notes, you know, from right to left, I would be there, I would be so confused, I couldn't figure out which way to slide my notes. So it was very, very serious, but gradually the Lord made such an amazing healing in my physical body. It was a physical healing mm. and I praise him for it. And so that was, that was one thing that I really wanted to stress to the readers, uh, the joy section, because yeah. so many people live their life and they, they don't experience joy. And how important is it if we believe that we have life eternal? If you know Jesus, there's a life beyond this world. That's right. And it's a promise you can stand on. Amen. And so I thought, you know, God, how can I live here and not experience the abundant life that you came to give me? And so I, I was challenged myself and I really pressed into scripture and started looking at what the word promises us. Jesus said, I came to give life and life more abundantly. Yes, he did. And so, you know, I thought about how many people are, are anxious and they worry. And that's a joy thief. You it talk is about a, joy yes. thief. <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's talk about those it joy thieves. It is a joy we thief. Want joy. Yes, because you know, even, even believers, we get trapped into allowing Satan to consume our thoughts, direct our thoughts. And really the Word of God says that we have to be transformed in our thinking. Yes. And it says, do not worry. How many times in scripture do we read, do not worry, be anxious for nothing. That's a big joy thief. 
yeah. Jane. Yes. And and so yeah. it's what you and I were talking about. Yeah. We can, we have to fight against that, don't we? We do. Yes. We do. And so I try to encourage the reader because when I went through those dark days, if I had given in to Satan and the thoughts that he wanted to put in my head, I remember one day I was walking in the neighborhood and these thoughts kept coming to my my mind about you know the end of life and i literally screamed out no satan i cast those thoughts out and i quoted jesus came to give me life and life more abundantly and that's what i'm going to accept good and, for you <laughs> so it is a challenge isn't it yeah and now, nothing who you agree changed with. no nothing changed no for a while but it was about to. Absolutely, absolutely. In about a year and a half, it did change. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm so thankful. Jane, I, 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 my heart just sings because, you know, I, I didn't know what was gonna happen, but God did a miraculous thing. And so I, I, when I was going through this, I, I looked in my hand and I thought, what do I have to pass forward? to the next generation. Yeah. You know, I think that God, He wants us not to just live for ourselves. That's right. You know, we, we're to pass on what the miracles of God, the truth yes. of God, right. the written scripture, the stories of God. And, you know, um, I really started to look at my life and I, I looked at the Bible studies that I had written over the years and I thought, I've got to get these in order and, and pass them on to my children and my grandchildren. And I thought, I haven't witnessed enough to people. I haven't shared the good news of the gospel enough. I, there's one thing that will bring joy into your life yeah. And that's yeah. sharing, sharing Christ. the gospel. Yes. And actually pray with someone to receive Jesus. Absolutely. There's nothing like that. Yes, yes. And we talked about the power of prayer and how important that is in our lives. Yes. That is such an important aspect of, of learning to walk with the Lord. It is. Learning to pray and believe. Amen. Jane, I, I think about how many times we say a prayer, but we don't actually expect an answer. <laughs> well, that's true. Is that true, well, Those Bob? that prayed for true. Peter didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Rhoda goes, he's at the door. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. yeah, how funny <laughs> is that? We do that, don't we? We, we? we pray the prayer, but we don't expect God to answer that, yeah. that, bring an answer. And I think that, what does that say in God's heart? Yeah. And you know what? We want our children to see us, we want to set a good, a godly example. We want our children to know God answers prayer. Absolutely. You know, we did pray about it. Come here, kids. <laughs> you know, we saw miracles. I mean miracles. Yes. And it's because we prayed. Absolutely. You know, and my, my children will never, ever forget these <laughs> miracles. But it came through prayer. Yeah. And yours came through prayer. You know, and the Lord said, you have not because you ask not. Absolutely. So decree the word of God. He said, you decree a thing and it will be established. If you decree the word of God, he says, I'm watching over my word to perform it. It doesn't return to me void. So let's talk about prayer just for a minute because that was in your book, yes. the different kinds of prayer. And I was so glad you did that. Yes. Because a lot of people really, they know to pray, but they don't understand the difference between intercession and a prayer of supplication. Yes. Yes. Yeah, would you talk about the difference? In well, that? intercession is really when you're praying for the needs of someone else. Um, you know, that, that's, in, that's an important part of prayer. When you go beyond your own wants and needs and you cry out to God for someone else. Supplication is, it is when you, from the very pit of your soul, cry out to God and he can see the desperation. It's yeah. in that desperation that God hears your prayers. He knows if you're serious about your prayer or not. Yeah. So we, we get into this um, rote prayers. You know, we do our checklist even in our prayer time. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I think that must be offensive to God because you know, it's really not what's on, on our hearts. We're just yeah. going through the routine. Yeah. I have to tell you a story. Um, I had a dear friend, her husband had cancer 
and they lost their health coverage and he lost his job because of the illness. And she and I joined together and we prayed about her home because she said, if God doesn't do something, we have to sell our home. We can't keep our home. So we joined together for six months and we prayed earnestly about her home. One day she goes into her business and a woman comes in and she told the lady she was going to sell her home. And the woman said, why? And she said, because we've lost our health insurance and we have no other option. All these medical bills. Medical bills. And the, the woman said, meet me here on Monday. So my friend Jewel, when this is in the book, she yes. went back into work that Monday and the woman came in with a check in hand of $187,000. Wow. Paid off her home oh in full. <laughs> That's a God so story. That is a God story. And wow. Jane, I think how many times the prayer of agreement, the Bible says if you wow. just reach out and agree with someone, in His will it will be done. Amen. And even agree with His Word. Yes. You know, when I was a young Christian, I was up at the altar. There was a lady beside me. And I, like I said, I was a new, cre new creature uh, <laughs> in Christ. And a lady, a mature Christian, I'm sure, left the front row and came up to talk to the lady beside me. And she said something that blew me away. Now, I, I'd never heard anything like this, but I was a sponge. I was listening to everything she said, and I never forgot it and I was in my 20s, and she said, there is, the Lord said to tell you that there is a demon at one side of you and an angel at the other, and the words you release out of your mouth will determine mm. which one goes out mm. to perform what you say. Incredible. So, wow, you've got to agree with what God says. You've got to decree what God says. Absolutely. And then you're releasing angels out. Absolutely. That is beautiful. And it's so true. It is Because true. when the, the Word of God says this, that Satan, what does he need? He needs a foothold. Right. He just needs a tiny little spot. <laughs> just a just tiny a little. Th yes. And if we agree with him, that gives him access yes. to our thought life, to, to, to our life in general. Very important. That's Amen. right. Yes. So the angels are just waiting. Yes, yes. <laughs> what are you going to say? Now, you haven't really gone in, and I'm saying this for a reason. Sure. But you haven't really gone into the seriousness of what you went through. Yes, it was so serious, Bob. You know, I, there would be days that I would get up and I could not, I just couldn't even hardly make it through the day. Um, forgetting how to get home, um, having difficulty brushing my hair. It was very serious. And I, you know, I, I think about, I think about what God did because had it not been for him, I know for certain I would not be here today. That's how serious it was. Yeah. But God is a good God. And I think about, you know, I think about during my life, I want, like Jane said, I want my children to remember me as a woman of faith, yeah. as a woman of prayer, yes. of a, as a woman who Wouldn't stood, compromise. would not compromise, yeah. stood on the Word of God in the midst of those difficulties. I think about Naomi and Ruth in, in Scripture, and, and Naomi was such a godly woman, and Ruth was such a pagan. <laughs> she was a... She was uh, from just a, a corrupt society, a corrupt family, but she looked at Naomi, and I'm paraphrasing here, but she said, Naomi, because you are who you are, I want to serve your yeah. God. Yeah. Now, how powerful that. is that? That's the kind of impact that I want to have in my family. Yes, yeah. and we want it also for our children. Yes. Yes. A great exactly legacy. Exactly that. Great legacy. And that, and that will please the Lord. And we yes. want to please Him more than anyone. Yes. We want to pass on that beautiful legacy. You build it, you live it, and then you can leave it. Yes. That's good. Amen. Well, we're going to take a break and uh, music by Christina Paul again. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's listen to the words.
darkness tries to steal the light that shines within the light that's been my heart that guides me through the dark every time i fall behind i know this in my mind i reach out for your hand i know Thank you, Christina. Beautiful song. Well, it's time for We the People. And the more informed we are about our nation's Christian heritage and freedoms, the better citizens we will be. Here's this week's edition of We the People.
Christianity was the moral compass for our early government, that is a fact. The recent goal of the regressives, and we call them regressives because they want to take us back to the days of Sodom and Gomorrah and not the days of spiritual revival that created our Constitution. Anyway, <laughs> the regressives are trying to rewrite history to make you believe that our founders were all deists and wanting Christianity separated from the government. That is a lie. And here's today's proof. Benjamin Rush was one of our founding fathers and a signer of the Declaration. He wrote a book of anecdotes detailing the events of our founding and listen to this quote of why he wrote it. To prevent my children being deceived by the histories of this day. That's exactly what we're talking about. He wanted the children to know the facts and not a revisionist, regressive rewrite of history. Here's something else that he wrote. This will give you some incredible insight into the thinking of our founders. Here's his writing, quote, I sat next to John Adams in Congress and upon my whispering to him and asking him if he thought we should succeed in our struggle with Great Britain, he answered me, yes if we fear God and repent of our sins. Two of our founders, one who would become the second president of the United States, are talking in Congress about fearing God and repenting of our sins. That is a fact. The Bible and reliance on God were the compass and cornerstone for our country. If every current member of Congress would get that same focus back, we can heal our country. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. And I think we're on the verge of God doing something great in this country. Yes, we do. Well, we've we? been talking to Robert, uh, Robert, that was Robert. <laughs> we're talking to Robin, <laughs> and she has told a lot about her life and the things she's been through. And the most important thing is, how do you get started on this life of legacy? And Robin, I just want you to share with the people. Absolutely. You know, I really feel like it, at the first and most important is starting with Christ. Yes. Because if we don't have Jesus in our heart, we can't leave a legacy. We can leave cars and jewelry and money, but I tell you, when, when you're going through this kind of situation, all those things, they don't matter at all. Right. That's right. They have no value whatsoever. And so, you know, for, for the readers and for the viewers, my heart's intent is to encourage them to stand on Jesus, accept Jesus into their heart. And if I could, can I pray for the viewers? Yes. I'd love to do that. Perhaps you're out there today and, and you don't know Jesus. Perhaps you have a life of regrets already. Well, I know how you feel, but today is a new day. Apostle Paul taught this in the Word of God. He said, forget what is behind and press forward to the higher calling in Jesus Christ. So the Word of God says this, it says, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. So Father, for every viewer out there today, God, we come before you, gracious King, and we ask you, Father, to touch their hearts we ask you, Father, to turn their lives around this very day. God, we ask for them to agree with us in this prayer that you and you alone are Lord. And Father, we thank you today for every lost soul that is walking into your kingdom, not because of what they've done, all because of what you've done for us. You gave your son that we could have life and life eternally. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We wanna amen. thank you for coming and sharing your life with us. Thank and you. The victories, and that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Victory after victory. It's been an honor to be with you all today. I thank you so much. I'm excited about the book. I know God is in it. Amen. Uh, listen, I believe God is in this book. You know, I was telling her in the green room that after I read a lot of the book, I went to bed that night 
I woke up about three o'clock and I was just talking to the Lord about it because, and the reason I did was because of the, the impact it had on my life and how I just knew, I thought about truth in there. And I thought, it, it was just like it was a quickening in my spirit. I thought, wow, Lord, this book is, is anointed. It is anointed. And friend, I believe it will change your life. And you'll Amen. desire to start thinking about what you want to leave your children. No regrets is That's the right. name of the book. And we just want to thank you. Thank you. For yes, we thank and you. For sharing all your life with us. It's an honor. Yes, thank you. And we're going to close out the program with a song by Christina Paul. Lord, take my life. Mm. That's what it's all about. Take my life, Lord. Amen. Make it be holy unto thee. Amen. Christina. Touching lives in many different ways Yet soon this life will fade away I realize I'm only here To praise your name Another day, another breath, another step I wouldn't take without you You're the only hope I cling on to Lord, you are my only king, my everything. Lord, take my life and let it be a sweet offering, Lord, to thee. For I will sing your